hey bro, so you're just into kitesurfing or you just made your first jumps and you're keen to see it on a picture, I'm with you, I know, everybody wants it, not everybody gets it. In this video, I'll help you to get better shots of yourself while kiting and get pictures instead of this and something like this. For this, you gotta go inside. The easiest option, of course, is the GoPro. These days, the GoPros are amazing, they do the job, and it's basically a point and shoot. What you need for that, a mount for the lines, or the strut, or putting it on your board, or having it in a stick, or the mouse mount. Put your GoPro into a time-lapse mode, two or five seconds, take a picture, it will do the job. Definitely you will have some really cool pictures of yourself kiting. The downside, you will have a few hundred with drops and spots or blurry pictures, which is not usable. So it's a little bit of browsing at the end. It's really worth the hassle. GoPro makes really good pictures, although it's limited. Point of view is really cool, but not all the time. I have a really good tip for you. Choose your mounts accordingly to the sun position. So if the sun is downwind of you, it's shining into your face, choose something that's facing to you. The line mount or the south mount, the selfie stick can be a really good choice. And of course, if the sun is behind you, it's upwind of you, use the mouse mount. These are easy tricks that will make your pictures amazing. Okay, let's step to advanced level. For this, you don't need something special camera. You can have a point and shoot or something compact or even like a basic DSLR camera will do the job. Of course, if your lens can zoom close to 100 or even 200 millimeter, that will be good, but yeah, not necessary. So you're going to put your camera into scene mode and choose the sport one. That will do two things. The first one is that the camera will shoot many pictures when you push down the button. Likely you will have one which is sharp. And the second one is that the camera shutter is really fast. So you're not gonna have blurry pictures, okay? You're gonna make the water freeze and all this stuff like, you know, in the air. That looks cool, okay? This is what we're looking for. To compose first. What I do basically is like, I get something good in the background. It looks good, fancy, you know, fills up the picture. And I try to, to put it like into one, one side of the background. And I try to compose my subject on the other side of the picture. And not always putting it in the middle, but sometimes that works too. So I'm just trying to figure out like, have a look at this, it's pretty good. The depth of field, really visible. So if something is in the foreground, you see in the background as well, it's both blurry and in between the guy is kiting. Typical mistake what people do that they overdo everything, they want to put everything on one picture which won't work. Okay, it's just gonna be a mess, it's gonna be too crowded, it's overwhelming to the eye. Just get your composition simple. You get the kiter, you get something fancy in the background and you can have like maybe a wave in the foreground or you know, maybe the water reflection in the foreground. Or maybe a tree somewhere in the picture, a palm tree. Like for example this. She is sitting watching the kiter in the distance, which is blurry, she's getting ready for her session, whatever. We have a shipwreck in the background here. Boom, killer, right? Looks good. Keep it simple, create depth of field and compose. Especially if somebody is taking pictures of you who is not a professional, they stay in one position for the whole session, so like a tree, you know? This is not cool, so you have to change the angle. Get some shots while the rider is riding in the front of you back and forth, and then get to the side and the rider is riding towards you and away from you, and kind of try to play with these, okay? Get the jumps when they get jumping towards you, so get the pop as the water sprays and then change the angle, go a little bit the other way and see whether this works or not or for certain tricks something looks better than the other. Don't forget, once you move you can get close and getting close is really important. I really like this, that you know it's not just like a picture and a kiter on it but, but something really close and maybe something blurry in the background. So, 
creating feelings, telling the story. It's not just about, you know, my friend is jumping. It's about the whole experience. You've been there, okay, you, you're doing the whole thing. And like, why the guy is going away from you and you're waiting, like, okay, look at that. He's launching there, nice angle, boom, boom, boom. Take some shots from really close, get some close to the bar. That will make really arts and good feelings and actually makes your picture looks better. When we kite surf, the weather is not always super nice, right? I'll protect your gear, of course, it's obvious. My main thing what I face in this way of shooting that uh, my lens is getting always the slight spray from the sea. And basically every one minute I have to wipe my lens down. Like this makeup fiesta spray, I'm not talking about, you know, waves are splashing on your gear. It's really like, a, even if you are standing like 5-10 meters from the sea, you get the spray well, in certain spots. Try not to get the sun sprayed in the front of you because it's going to have like really backlight pictures. Try to get the sun instead behind you, okay? And yeah, according to the beach and the wind direction, you will see what you can work with. Sometimes there is no chance, sometimes there is chance. I would avoid noon because then the colors and the sun is coming straight above, but like afternoon can work. You know, everybody is into this uh, golden hour, right? Which can be amazing. It's most of the time it's a silhouette. You get the backlight, so the sun is really strong and it's getting this orangey, reddish feeling, which is beautiful and gives good color to everything else. But on the other side, everything gets really contrasted. Yeah, that can be good for a few pictures. I like sunset sessions, but just like a limited way. I don't want to take too many shots there. Get creative, go against the rules. So every rules is being there to be broken, right? Don't shoot with backlight. Shoot with backlight, shoot a few shots because you can get shots like this or like this, amazing backlight shots, right? Really powerful, a little bit of drama, and that's good. Not for 400 pictures, just for a few, but I really would go for it. RT is sexy, so don't skip on it. Try, experiment, new angles, new everything. If you have a 360 camera, more amazing, use it. These things are really spicing up all the pictures you can take. These days you can't spare the app after work. Something has to be done, even if you just put an Instagram filter on it, you need to do something with your photos. You don't have to be a photographer to use such a thing, it's like, like Lightroom, it's free for your phone, it's pretty easy. You put some contrast, you put some brightness, you change a little bit the clarity, and already the picture will be a lot different. If you use some presets, you can make it super nice. Basically have a plan. That's really important to know where you will put this person to. Okay, you're gonna stand here and I'm gonna come from this direction and jump here. Have them to frame it. So kind of like, you know, yeah, I'm gonna come there and I'm gonna jump over there. You try to frame it like you put this slight house into the background and I'm gonna jump here on the right, okay? Give instructions to the photographer like this. That will make a whole big difference. Explain a different shot. So once they took the lighthouse shot, they take like a few tricks on that shot or whatever you plan there. Make them move, make them change the angle and ride towards them instead of riding in the front of them. To get the golden ratio nicely done on the picture, I always do it in the after work. So it doesn't matter if the person didn't put it like perfectly into the frame, I will do it after. And last but not least, if it's shallow, get your shooter close to you as you can. But yeah, keep that safe distance, but get as close as possible. Of course, to keep it safe, the shooter can stay upwind. If you keep these few tricks and tips in mind, I'm sure you will get super nice pictures. And if you have a little creativity adding to this, it's going to be awesome. People, thanks for watching. Hope it helped as well. And show me if you took some photos according to this tutorial. I'm keen to see them. Keep kiting. Peace out.